Yes, today we're at the Jesus the Christ Ministries Mission Midweek Midweek Teaching and second of the fourth, 2014. We're into April now. We're going to be looking at corruption today. That's plenty of that stuff around, isn't there? Plenty of corruption. And a brother came into the hall first thing this morning and he started just about reciting this message today. <laughs> He's talking about corruption and simplicity and, and I thought, well, Father, do what you want. And uh, beautiful confirmation of the message today. So let's open our Bibles at the writings of 2 Corinthians 11. We're going to start reading in verse 1 and uh, we'll move from there. If anyone has any electrical appliances that need to be turned off, we can do that. 2 Corinthians Chapter 11, verse 1. Oh, that you would bear with me in a little folly, and indeed you do bear with me. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband, and that I may present you as a chaste virgin to the crimes. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived thee by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the Christ. We'll leave it there. Three verses. Primary verse is three. And uh, in verse two, Paul's talking about being jealous, not of, but for. And Paul was jealous for the saints and the disciples means he he cared for them extremely other areas of the letters it says that he was like a nursing mother to them and it's very hard for a carnal man to be like a nursing mother to anyone because of such pride the Degenerated man has is forever trying to upkeep and uphold his toughness and manhood, not knowing that God will do that on faith obedience. Hey, and so uh, we're going to be looking at corruption today, and Paul feared. Least somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, he was bothered about the, the Corinthian saints that they may end up being corrupted too. In verse 2 Paul said that he had betrothed them to one husband, and we do talk a lot in Jesus the Christ ministry is about prostituting your heart and I mean doctrinally that we have a lot of teachings coming this way and that way I've often found with people who do a lot of searching and, 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 and they're being taught by three or four different teachers they're trying to gain knowledge and, and, and wisdom so they can go around the place blabbing how much they know well that doesn't really work that's only really leads to a form of knowledge and a form of truth but it's when God gives it to you you have it you have it you don't have to carry your Bible around with you and read it from the Bible. It's in your heart. He places the word in your heart. 
and he brings it to your mind on that elevator in time of remembrance by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey? <laughs> like clear shining after rain. Hey? So Paul was jealous and, and he really cared about the, the disciples of Jesus and he was telling them that he said, I've, I've given you over and brought them into the Lord. And he done that in order to present them as chast virgins. Now, just that there as a chast virgin to Christ, that's not a, some Dalmatian version, is it? Virgin. That's got, I mean, that just destroys the it really doesn't matter Jesus has come back for everyone you now he's come back for a chast virgin that's what he's come back for a bride without spot blemish or wrinkle amen and Paul feared at least they'd end up with spots hey right? devilish spots on their garment so the devil is a liar he's the father of every lie the children of the devil are liars there's no doubt about it a, a, a child of God cannot go around lying all the time that is not a child of God they're not see when we're born of a woman we're born of a lie we're we're born into lies and therefore we just lie like pigs and mud. When we're born of the truth, we're, we're born of the truth. We're born of the Christ and the spirit of the Christ and, and we speak the truth and love the truth. We don't go around lying all the time. Church leaders and, and, and church people are lying all the time and we see that the... Um, large majority of them today lying through their teeth Francis the talking mule the Pope is no different and they, don't, they, they couldn't possibly be born of the spirit of truth or led by the spirit of truth they're not gods they don't belong to God right and Satan is very convincing Paul knew that and amazingly convincing so that Paul feared at least somehow that was the amazing part somehow well Paul was saying how he how did he actually do it we're, we're talking about a woman Eve who knew no sin until that opportunity knocked I mean don't try and tell me the devil can't deceive humans today they're open from the day of birth to lies and sin and deception Corruption is everywhere over the earth. Can someone say amen? amen? Paul was not fearing for himself, but for the Corinthians. And he knew that the devil was very crafty and had that ability and skill and cunning to, to even have the people of the world convinced of his doctrine and way and teaching proclamation let's go to 1 John 5 1 John chapter 5 hey? 1 John chapter 5 we're talking about corruption today 1 
first letter of John, chapter 5, and we're going to go to verse 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that Jesus has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. Oh. And we are in him who is true. Oh. In the crimes. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idolatry and idols. It's powerful, eh? The whole world is under the sway of the devil. The whole world is under the sway of the devil. We're not. We, we see what God says here, the distinction. We know that we are of God and the whole world, listen, the whole world he's talking about lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us understanding of this so that we don't have to be under the sway. We have understanding. Get understanding. We've been looking at that, haven't we? Get clear understanding. Then you won't be under the sway. He won't rock you to and fro, as the scriptures say. But we're not to be tossed to and fro. Hey? With every wind of doctrine. But we are under the disciplining hand of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's go there. Verse 11. He himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers and evangelists. Ephesians 4.11. Ephesians 4.12. To equip the saints so they can do the work of the ministry and edify the body of the Christ till we come to the unity of the faith, listen, and the knowledge of Jesus to a perfect man. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ, listen, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the trickery, there's that word trickery, of men and women in the cunning craftiness by which they wait in order to deceive. Those are led by the devil, the great trickeria, the greatest trickerer, waiting. We know that the devil waits, don't we? That he is like a lion, like a roaring lion. Waiting for its prey to deceive. It's the whole work of the devil to deceive like a deceived thee. Paul was bothered about this, wasn't he? Oh, no, he says. Hey? Eh? We know that we are of God. We don't, he says, we're of God. And then he said, and the, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that. Jesus has come. Why did he come? So that we don't have to be under the sway of the wicked one. He gives us understanding so that we're not tossed to and fro with wicked teachings of men and women which we have everywhere today. Someone say amen. amen. Hey? That we may know him who is true and we know that we are in him who is true Jesus 
the true God and eternal life. Can you say amen? Yeah? So, somehow, you see ministers over the centuries and decades and you wonder how come they ended up deceived like that. I told you about the brother that came into the fellowship this morning and left and he was, we are talking about everything I've talked about so far. Thank you, Lord. And he said that he's been waiting on the Lord to find out a man from God who will baptise him. Well, that's not the first time that's happened to this ministry. We had those Mormon family. They waited on the Lord. They searched the internet looking for a minister who they would trust to baptise a man of, of God. Ended up coming here, didn't they? Yes. Thank you. Sorry, devil, you can't lie to me. I feel he some as the servant of CV. I want to concentrate on the word corrupt. Because it's really the essence of the whole scripture outside of uh, simplicity. The two main words that stand out to me, corruption, corrupt or corruption and simplicity. When things get complicated, corruption is in the midst. I'll tell you now. Just look at politics. <laughs> Full of ticks, isn't it? Blood sucking ticks. So, the word corruption and corrupt, it means to pervert, to make evil, it means to spoil by either mistakes or deliberately, or alter for the worst. And that's what's happened to do the doctrine of Christ. That's what Paul was bothered about. It's what John the Beloved spoke about in the book of Revelation to the church of Pergamos. We are talking about that this morning too with that uh, brother that came and, and, and left before the meeting. Talking about Jezebel and calling herself a prophetess. If anything, she was a false prophetess and a, called herself a teacher and infiltrating the people in the church with other doctrines. Find yourself a bona fide pastor, teacher, prophet, stick with him. And that's your decision who you believe that in. You have the Spirit of God. So the devil came to Eve with positive thinking. And, 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 he's, and the devil's message in, in the Garden of Eden, in the writings of Genesis 3, 1 to 6, at least 1 to 6, was all perversion. He was perverting what God said. He, he, was, he was corrupting and making evil. To make evil is to... Violate God's instruction. Hey? Right? Everything that violates the instructions of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. E V I L. And that's what the devil was doing. He's corrupting. He was altering for the worst. But it looked good to Eve because the devil came in the mode of positive thinking and that's all through the world churches today positive thinking everything he said was so seemed so positive didn't it so 
There was no honesty, truth, or humility. Convinced. He was convinced to accept corruption. Hey? She was convinced. For many years I have heard that oh, that man or woman must be anointed because they've convinced many to follow them. That's a lie again. That's not the truth. Many a con man and con woman have convinced people to hand over their lands and properties and everything and they're not of the Lord one dot. Benny Hinn, Joyce Meyer, Kenneth Copeland, Joel Osteen, the Fred Prices, the William Brenhams, the whole lot. You go down the list, all marketeers. Michael Yusuf, Chuck Swindle, the swindler. The, the names just go on and on. Jerry Savelle and Jesse Suplantis, I mean Duplantis. The whole lot of them. Let's go to Matthew 4 and have a look there. Matthew chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hey? Get understanding. We're of God. Jesus came to give us understanding that we'll understand the difference between truth and error. Can you say amen? Matthew. Matthew chapter 8, we're going to. Sorry, uh, Matthew chapter 4, we're going to verse 8. Matthew 4, verse 8, which reads in my Bible, and the devil took Jesus up on an exceedingly high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, and he said to him, All these things I give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said, You're joking. Away with you, Satan. It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall worship. Here, here, here is the devil trying to plant a seed in Jesus' mind, trying to get him to worship the kingdoms of the world, trying to get him to worship materialism and money and all the rest of it. And Jesus said, I'm not going to worship that. I, therefore, I won't bow down before you. Can someone say amen? And many do worship at that mighty dollar, don't they? <laughs> I'd rather be a doorman in the house of my Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked where everything's happening, so to speak. Everything bad. Eh? So the devil, he's not behind the door. He, he's not backward and coming forward. He even tried to deceive Jesus. But we know that Psalm 42, I should say Psalm 24, Verse 1 says that the earth and the fullness thereof already belongs to Jesus, doesn't it? Amen? Hey? So, we leave ourselves open to the devil when we reject the truth. He has opportunity. Eve rejected the truth. And the devil come in like a flood. The devil offered Jesus the kingdoms, plural, of the world. The rock and roll kingdom, the, the uh, pornography kingdom. He offered him the, uh, the banking system kingdom. He offered him the uh, academic system and kingdom. He offered every kingdom of the world you can think of. The clothing kingdom, co clothing system. The religious, he offered him everything. Every kingdom of the world. But Jesus is, is not convinced to accept corruption. No way. Because that's all we're really receiving is corruption. 
The world is corrupt. It's under the sway of the devil. But Jesus came, didn't he? To give us understanding. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. Oh, when Jesus comes, the devil he must flee. Hey? Right? When Jesus comes, the people shout the victory. Oh, when Jesus comes, when he arrives, the devil he must flee. Matthew 4, 11, then the devil left him. When Jesus comes, when Jesus comes, the devil left him. Angels came. <laughs> Ministered to him. Can you say amen? Hey? Convinced to accept corruption. So Satan is very convincing. You know, positive thinking only works with one kind of man and woman. Positive thinking only works with one kind of person. Always has and always will. Selfish people. If you're selfish, positive thinking will work with you. What I mean by work, I mean the devil will be able to convince you to follow him because you're selfish. Positive thinking is all about self. You know when you're told to think positive about something? It's about you, isn't it? But faith is not about you. It's about Jesus. <laughs> faith is all about Jesus. When Jesus comes, the devil he must flee. The people shout the victory. When Jesus comes, when he arrives, the devil he must flee. Hey? But I feel he somehow, that word somehow equals vast. Vast ways. Immense, immense ways the devil comes to the scene. And he told Eve that she would be like God. Hey? How deceiving. You, you, you look at that, uh, the man William Brenham and he, he grew up in a household of witchery and wicker and he grew up in a household of immorality and devilish ways. Started off with the Baptist church and ended up with the manifested sons of God and all kinds of twisted doctrine and twisted people like Jim Jones and Old Roberts. Old Roberts was a mason. William Brennan was a Mason. William Brennan was probably more Mason than the Mason. William Brennan believed that the all-seeing eye was uh, Jesus. Related to Jesus. But it was actually a satanic God, Ra Ra. William Brennan finally was laid to rest in a pyramid tomb just the same as old Taz Russell of the Jehovah Witnesses pyramid see, that Egyptian death burial hey how the scene can you get that you, you, you search the true beliefs of these so called great men William Brennan was into marketing. The same with his son, Billy Paul, into marketing the word of God. But yet they claim the highest and closest position to Christ you can get most of the time. Just like Joyce Meyer and Benny Hinn and 
the Copelands and Michael Yusuf and, you know, they've all got a private line to God, you know. <laughs> blah, 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 rah, rah, you know. Believing in, William Brennan believed in, uh, you know, the pyramid um, working and he believed in... Uh, astronomy and the zodiac I mean how can you have all these mixtures and, and, and be betrothed to crime I mean how could that one be jealous for Jesus when they're prostituting the heart to other doctrines and balloons hey? how can that be <clears throat> that you would speak totally blatantly outrightly against the scriptures that say we're led by the Holy Ghost not by angels it actually opposes the scriptures to be led by angels because the Lord tells us to beware lest an angel of light deceive you which is what Brenham had an angel of light that hovered over his head. Convinced to accept corruption. Convinced to pervert the gospel. To, to violate the instructions of the Lord. Convinced to spoil, taint the pure word of God. That was given to Eve. That God said very simply... There's no, no complexity about it. Very simple. Simplicity of Christ was there in the Garden of Eden. Don't touch the fruit. That's how simple it was. You won't get any simpler. The devil come along, what did he do? Complicated the whole manner. He talked it down. He said, oh no, like, you know, it's... He got into her head and she started to look. Oh, we, it looks good. It, it'll taste good. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh and the pride of, the, of life came and I'll be like God. And he had her right there. Hey? He gave permission and he took a soul. If the devil's got permission, he's got your soul. Got your mind, will and emotions. Hey? So, we're in danger. We leave ourselves open with unbelief. <clears throat> rejecting the love of the truth. We leave ourselves open to the devil. Eve rejected the truth. Eve, Eve rejected the word of God. Don't touch the truth. That's the truth of the matter. The lie was... No, you will not die. Eve left herself open through unbelief. There's no rest with unbelief. You cannot enter the rest, the heavenly realm. You cannot enter the rest of the Christ. When you enter the rest of the Christ, the rest is history. <laughs> Someone say Amen. When Jesus comes, the people shout the victory because he is the victor. Now we lay hold of the victory by doing what he said. Our part is to do what he said. Then the victory is out. On faith obedience. Let me, let, 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 let me quote my fellow minister and, and, and dear brother Wilson on, on his latest writing I am no sinner saved by a amazing grace maze amazing let me quote 
Brother Wilson. Confession is good for the soul. Of course, as John said, if, not when, if we sin willfully and add an insult to injury, if we sin, fail to admit the sin, saying, oh, that was my sinful nature, not me. We deceive ourselves. Make God a liar whose spirit convicts us of that sin. And the blood definitely does not cleanse us from unrighteousness. John goes on to also say, these things I write unto you that ye sin not. And whosoever abides in Christ sinneth not. For sin is a departing from the living God. There is no forgiveness seven times seventy. Yes, it is true that no scripture promises forgiveness seven times seventy for moral willful sin. For forgiveness is conditional on repentance. And how could genuine repentance be repetitive? Amen? Salvation is the change of both status and direction. We cannot be opposites or going in opposite directions at one time. Remember, I, I have said for years, you can't walk in two directions at the same time. To desire right and do wrong is a bona fide statement of unconversion. As Paul so aptly describes from his own pre-Christian experience in Romans 7. Romans chapter 7. Hey? But it needs to be understood that the flesh, our natural propensities, appetites and instincts are not in themselves sinful. Rather, they are made by God as necessary parts of our natural being. But the flesh, outside of subjection to the Lord as Lord, is a definition of sin. It is a good thing used in a wrong way for a bad end. It is a servant that is... Now our master given control. However, flesh in control is reversed at conversion. We say yes to the Lord, not to the flesh. Up to the light we have. It is the conditional fruit of true salvation. We are not accountable for what we do not know. Amen. Eve, Eve willfully chose the doctrine of the devil. Hey? It, was a will, it was her own will. She was convinced because her will was in there. She had a choice, but that's what she really wanted at the end of the day. She was convinced to accept corruption. People who follow Joyce Meyer, Benny Hinn, Fred Price, they're all convinced to accept that corruption and violation of the truth. They're all con convinced to, to accept the perverted gospel 
because their heart really wants what these corrupt church and church leaders are proclaiming. That's what they that was their that's their real heart. That's the way they see Jesus and the gospel as a sugar daddy, as as material gain, financial gain. They don't see Christ as beautiful, Prince of Peace, mighty God. They don't see Christ as clear shining after rain. They don't see Christ more beautiful than anything you can see with your eyes, nor did Eve. Eve didn't see Jesus more beautiful than what Satan often. Eve said that that fruit in the garden meant more to her than Jesus. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness so your mind your mind your will and your emotions if you give the devil permission if he gets your permission he'll corrupt your mind your will and your emotions. You won't be choosing Christ. You, you, your will will not be to do Father's will. That is the way Jesus es escaped. The man Jesus escaped the devil by choosing Father's will. He escaped the pain and the fear in the Garden of Gethsemane by choosing Father's will. Better still, Father, your will, not mine. But he, he, he did have the devil come in the garden with an atmosphere of positive thinking, saying there might be another way. As he said to Eve, there is another way to heaven. Eve, there is another way, he said to Eve. There is another way. And it's my way, says the devil. But there is no other way. Jesus came and give, to give us understanding so we won't be, won't be tossed to and fro with these crooks and con men and con women, convincing people there is another way. Once saved, always saved. Absolute predestination. Salvation by election. How the devil deceived the Spurgeons and deceived the, the, the Chuck Swindle and the Swindlers. And, and how the devil has deceived millions of Bible college teachers and the devil has deceived. Somehow, Deceive them as he deceived Eve, saying, you will not die. Once born, never dead. But there's scripture after scripture. There is the, the word of the Lord multiplied 80 fold to say you can forfeit your salvation. But the devil has turned it around and said, oh, God is not so. He would not do that to you. As the devil deceived Peter into saying, Peter, you need to go and tell Jesus you're too good to go to Jerusalem and be crucified. Don't do that. Think positive, Peter. Go and tell Jesus you don't want him to go to Jerusalem. They're going to kill him. You don't want to do that. That's, now, that's not very loving, is it? That's not very nice for the flesh. Hey? 
You've been a guy now. Go on. Quit. You go off and tell Jesus. And Jesus turned around and said, I know who's talking through you, Peter. The devil. The same one that deceived Eve is talking through you, Peter. Get behind me, Satan, you lying, ugly thing. The devil is a liar. And all his children are liars too. And they lie through their teeth. Day after day and don't think twice about it. They've got no conviction. If you're a true follower of Jesus, I tell you what, you'd have conviction of one lie. Just one. And you repent of it. And never do it again. Because if you did repent of it, you'd be empowered against it. Hey? Now this repetitious repentance 70 times 7 for the one known sin. That's hogwash. That's just total garbage. Hey? True grace does not cover sin. Wilson sin. True grace does not cover sin and call it an imputed righteousness. God does not put new cloth to an old garment. He's not that stupid. Patches, I'm dependent upon you, son. <laughs> and though professing Christian may desperately plead otherwise every sin day, I mean Sunday, sin day morning by sin day morning, and broadcast by broadcast, and book sale by book sale, to relieve the conscience of the unfaithful. Though this be so, yet such plausible pleadings are definitely not the good news of the good book. For Jesus came into the world to save to the uttermost sinners from their sin. That is a nature of sin, a life disconnected from God. For if any man be in Christ, the connection has been made and he is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold all things are become new for we walk not after the flesh but after the spirit up to the light we have and on such grounds there is no condemnation and no one is able to pluck us out of father's hand though of course we have the option to draw back to perdition and destruction as the holy bible forever warns us yes god's promise is I will give them a new heart. And we've been preaching it, haven't we? As Wilson says here, dovetailing again. I will give you a new heart, new, and take away the old. Hallelujah. But yet so many are convinced to accept corruption, perverted doctrine, perverted gospels that violate the instructions in the doctrine of the Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, who came to delete, remove and erase the sin of the world. Someone say amen. amen. And even though they have fancy names and they mark it all and anything in the name of Jesus, and oh, they raise the dead and they, they heal the sick and, and they have words of knowledge that they got from prayer cards given to them. But they still don't have that one thing. The bona fide truth. You know why? Because they're not taught by Jesus. They have not the simplicity of the profound truth 
of the revelation knowledge and the love of the truth of the Christ they just don't have them positive thinking is about you positive thinking is about self Eve was about self she wasn't about a husband she wasn't about God she was about herself because everything that the devil said to Eve was you, you, you. And you will be like God. And you will, and you will. And then she started. And I will, will I? Wow. And it looked good to me. And it tastes good to me. And I'll be, and I will be like God. It's all positive thinking. Always is about you. And the world. It's not about Jesus and Jesus. <laughs> it's about you and the world and you becoming someone you just, just think positive the new age uh, uh, spiritualists they teach it that's what Copeland and all them teach positive thinking the Masonic Lodge teaches it The Masonic Lodge actually teach what the Roman Catholics teach and they, Roman Catholics teach what the Masonic Lodge teaches. Works in order to have a slice of heaven. Hogwash. Hey? Right? So many are altering the word of God for the worst today and believing in their deception that they are doing good or making the narrow road a much more tolerable and easier walk. Even one that the media are able to cope with while they carry their sin on their backs as a prized possession. For they all say, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I will always be a sinner because the devil told me so. Well, let's see what Jesus says in his doctrine. Let's see what the doctrine of Jesus says. You'll be a sinner forever? Romans chapter 6. Can we go there, please? Let's see what Jesus said. Romans chapter 6. Let's go there. We go to... Romans 6 and the verses 20. For when you were slaves of sin, were, you were free in regard of righteousness and you could do what you want, when you want, no matter how vile. What fruit did you have back in those days of which you are now ashamed of everything you used to do? For the end of those things is surely death We're in Romans 6, 22 now. But now, having, now, now, having been, double emphasis now, now, one, having been, two, set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit now, which is holiness. And the end will be eternal life if you continue in his goodness the doctrine for the wages of sin is death unlike what the devil says but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord and you will never have eternal life unless you follow Christ Jesus our Lord and walk with him and do what he said because Eternal life is in Christ Jesus. In. Meaning we have to be doing what he says in order to have eternal life. You can't be in Christ Jesus in God's eyes and not doing what he says. That's why Paul said to the Corinthians, you need to check to see if you are in Christ. If you are still in the faith, which is the doctrine. Is that right? You have to check. And he asked the Corinthians to check that out because the way they were walking was like unsaved people. 
People who ought to be ashamed of themselves. At least they have been disqualified from the race of faith. And you know what happens when you're disqualified from a race? There's no hope of a crown. There's no hope of a wreath of righteousness. There, there, there's no hope of winning when you're disqualified. Bill Brown racing in the 100 metres sprint. Bang! And the gun sounded. And he's running down the sideline. He jumped the gun. He has to be called off the field. He cannot continue the race. He jumped the gun like he jumped the gun, didn't she? She ran ahead. She didn't listen to what God said. Amen? I believe this is a beautiful message. Even though it's 12 years old and it falls, this particular message falls in, 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 on this day and, and, and week and month and we've got the egg season coming up which is full of corruption, isn't it? The egg season, the Easter. Please go to my YouTube and, and, and scroll down because I put up a whole new section called Easter versus the truth, the Christ. And, and they're cross messages, not egg messages. They're messages of the cross. At the cross I found forgiveness. At the cross I found a friend. At the cross I found Lord Jesus. At the cross I found myself. I lay them down that day at Calvary. All my sins he gladly bled. Now I'm free, I'm free to worship. Now I'm free to go his way. I'm free to obey now. I wasn't free to obey before. Worship is obedience. Now I'm free, I'm free to worship. Now I'm free to go his way and to be on his way. Because <laughs> I laid them down at Calvary. All my sins he gladly bared. Now I'm free to be the servant of the Lord. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free to be the servant of my Lord. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free to be the servant of my Lord. He taught me how to praise him all. He taught me how to sing a song. He taught me how to love. I'm free to be uh, the servant of my Lord. We can't serve the Lord and love the Lord. And we can't sing a song of the Lord unless we really obey him. That's love. The greatest of all is love. That we would live in obedience to the victor Emmanuel. Not violate his word. Not corrupt it and pervert it for self-gain and self-glory but to obey it just as it is. Don't touch it. Do not touch it. Don't change a thing. Hey? I always say to Jesus in the quiet times I have with the Lord, don't go changing. To try and please me. 
I love you just the way you are. I just want someone that I can talk to. I love the Lord just the way he is. He's got, he knows birth. I'm the one that has to change to please him. That Jesus died once and for all. The word of God is the same yesterday, today and forever. If we corrupt it and pervert it and try to change it, and add to it and take away from it, we'll never reach the pearly gates. We'll never enter into the kingdom. It has to be the bona fide absolute true if God's going to help us. Right? Speak the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God and he does. Amen? Amen. There's so many. we got the egg season coming with the rabbits, the transvestite rabbits, rabbits laying eggs. That's an, just a, an outright abomination to creation to start with. An abbot, uh, an abbot, <laughs> an abbot laying an egg. A rabbit laying an egg. A rabbit laying an egg. Never heard of it. That's devilish in itself. False teaching again of the devil. Egg laying rabbits. And it's the egg season coming. And the world's rubbing its claws. As it does with Santa Claus. But we have clause after clause in the Bible to, to tell us and give us understanding. Get understanding! Ah! Clear understanding! Ah! I can see clearly now the lies are gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. It's going to be a bright, bright, sun, S-O-N, sunshining day. Look all around, nothing but blue sky. Look straight ahead, nothing but blue sky. I know I can make it now. The lies are gone. I know I can make it now. <laughs> because he came that I may know. 1 John 5, 19, 20. Jesus came that I may know. And not just know, but understand the knowing and the knowledge. And get revelation on the knowing and the knowledge. And also partake of that love. That's embedded and buried in the truth. Amen. Whoo! Dear, oh dear. Right? Every day is the 4th of July, isn't it? <laughs> Saturday. Whoo! Da, 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 da. Dun, 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 dun. Saturday in the park. Every day's the fourth of July. Every day's Jubilee, isn't it? Every day's day of liberty and freedom in the Christ when we do what he says on faith obedience. He don't ask you to try your best. He don't want you to go down the road with a hunk of timber on your back. The wheel on the bottom. He, 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 he don't want you to go making hot cross buns. He doesn't want that. He don't want you spending all the money on the chocolate eggs so that the children w will end up hypo and heart conditions. He don't want that. He just said very simply. And Paul the Apostle said, didn't he? 
not to be corrupted from the simplicity of the Christ. And what did Jesus say? Follow me. Follow, follow, follow the leader. Follow he, he, he. Hey? When he says put your hand on your shoulders, and when he says put your hand on your knees, just do it. <laughs> when Jesus says jump, don't ask why, ask how high. Whoo! Hey? The beauty of obedience. What a message that would be. <laughs> hey? The Beulah land beauty of obedience. Foretasting of glory divine. Here. 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 For I am jealous for you with messianic jealousy. For I have given you to the Christ that I may present you chast on the day of judgment. Can someone say amen? Isn't it wonderful? Isn't Jesus wonderful? Saturday in the fall, every day the fourth of July.